saving has been around as long as people have been growing food. Sadly, these days, lots of people are dependent on big companies for getting their seeds as opposed to saving them themselves. And this can get problematic because once you start bringing seeds in from other countries or other states, it's not as guaranteed that you're going to get a good yield or a good strike rate. You want your own seeds because they're going to be local and organic and they'll be acclimatised to your particular region. Once your garden is established, it's a great idea to start what's called a seed bank. Seed banks are basically a good way of ensuring that you're always going to have access to reliable seed. Another important aspect with seed saving is making sure your crops don't cross-pollinate. Once this happens, the produce, and therefore seed, you're collecting won't be guaranteed in being the same quality as your original plant. For some plants, like beans, carrots and tomatoes, they'll actually self-pollinate meaning they'll produce reliable crops and seed without intervention. Other plants, such as corn, pumpkin, squash and zucchinis, will cross-pollinate. When this happens, you'll still get produce, however, it's less reliable in how good it will be and makes saving seed unreliable. To prevent cross-pollination from happening, you can intervene and do some hand pollination. So here we are with a variety of zucchini that we're going to demonstrate how to hand pollinate. When you're hand pollinating, all you have to do is identify the male flower. The male flower will grow on a longer and thinner stem than the female flower. It will have a single stamen in the middle. When you're hand pollinating, pick the male flower and remove all the petals gently from it. Down here we have a female flower. You can see the already maturing fruit. This flower's already been pollinated. It's a great example though because if you look inside, you can see the multi-segmented stamen. That's what you're looking for in a female flower. You can get the male flower and all you have to do is rub the two stamens together, basically distributing pollen into the female flower. So when you're hand pollinating, you're essentially acting like a bee, distributing pollen from the male to the female flower. When you do this, you need to make sure that you go out the night before the flower looks like it's going to open. You can put a paper bag over the head of it and gently tie it around the base. The next morning you want to get up nice and early, at least before 9am, and take the bag off. That's when you can go through the process of putting the male pollen onto the female flower. When you are doing hand pollinating, make sure you choose a few male and female flowers to do it too. That way you're just going to guarantee success. When it comes time to actually choosing what plant you're going to save seed from, I want you to choose the biggest, bestest, most beautiful plant you have. Don't eat that one, you want to save the seed from it. Here I've got a great pumpkin I'm going to save. And you want to make sure that it stays on that plant for as long as possible, getting as ripe as it can. That means the seeds are going to fully develop inside it. To make sure other people don't come along and pick that pumpkin, you can do so a few simple techniques. Make some signs to saying saved for seed, or you can get a little steak with a bright ribbon on it and just pop it right next to it. That way, people are going to know straight away it's special and they should probably leave it alone. When it comes to actually saving the seed, every single plant will have its own process. What's really important and what they all have in common is that you want to store them in a dry and dark place. Here we have some rocket seed. So all you have to do is gently massage it out of its husks and it'll fall out really easily. Once you've got rid of the husks, you can put it into a little bag. Just pop your seeds in there. Seal it up. And you can, from here you can either put it in a paper bag or if rodents are an issue, use a glass jar. Pop your bag in there and seal it up. And it'll be nice and safe. Here I've got some cherry tomato seeds in a paper bag. But again, I put them in a Ziploc bag first. What both of these have in common is that the labelling is really clear. This is important, otherwise a year down the track you go, what is that? And you'll have, you won't know. So make sure you put the name of the plant, where you got it from, and the date that you harvested it. Seed saving is a really important process to take part in, as you're basically creating a closed loop system with your food production. How it works is you plant your seed, the seed will grow into a beautiful plant, you can then eat that plant, and save some seed from it. From there, when the time comes, you can put that seed back into the earth again. And on it goes. It's a beautiful cycle to take part in. The best joy of life, I reckon.